Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. So you know, Jesse, I've been watching all these stories about Tesla over the years, mm -hmm. and they remind me of coverage that we've seen before. Like, like what? Well, you know how in the 1950s, let's say, you would see newsreel footage, uh, news footage of, of things, and you'd know that that's not quite the way it really happened. It was kind of sensationalized. You, you, know, you know what I mean? I don't really. I mean, I wasn't alive in the 1950s. That's and true. Neither were you, but well, you know what, what? Do you, what do you mean? Let's go to our 1950s reporter in the field. Okay. Hello, America. Chet McCoy here on the scene of a crash in Culver City, California, where this Model S has crashed into the back of a fire truck. Okay, so he's talking about that Tesla crash that just happened uh, in, in California a yep. week ago. Right. Uh, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So let's just, I guess, chat with our Chet McCoy out there in the okay. field. Yeah. Um, yeah, we heard about the crash. Uh, so was a Model S involved? We all know these newfangled electric cars are silent, but deadly. But I thought that the driver survived. He may have survived physically, yes, but mentally he is shell-shocked. Anything about autopilot? Unless your name is Otto and you are a pilot, I do not want to hear anything about autopilots around here. I'm Chet McCoy, here on the scene of Culver City, California. Back to you, Zach and Jesse. Okay, Chet. Thank, yeah, thanks. I mean, I, and, Okay, I see what you're saying. I mean, it, it's like, you know, his reporting is the same thing that you kind of hear on the news. Oh, Tesla, it got in a crash. Ah, oh, we told you that those cars are dangerous. Right. I mean, let's look at what we know happened so far. We've yep. gotten from a bunch of reports that uh, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning on Interstate 405 in Culver City, a Tesla Model S with autopilot smashed into the back of a uh, fire truck. Yep. What we think happened from many accounts is that uh, traffic was going about 65 miles an hour. The fire truck was at a, an angle in the emergency lane, so it was taking up two lanes. Yeah, so the, the front half was in the emergency lane and the, the back half of the car or of the truck was out in the left-hand lane. Right. So then uh, there was a pickup truck in front of the Model S going about 65 miles an hour. That pickup truck realized pretty late in the game that he was going to hit the fire truck and so swerved out of the lane to avoid it. Mm -hmm. The Tesla was following the truck um, in autopilot and the driver at the very last second realized that the truck in front of him just swerved out of his lane. He wasn't sure whether he stepped on the brake first or whether... Um, Automatic emergency braking kicked in. Right. Uh, either way, the Model S hit the fire truck. Yep. Um, going slower than 65, we believe. We believe the braking did slow it to probably around 35 or 45 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, the driver was able to walk away with just some scratches and bruises, um, but basically walked away largely unhurt. Yep. Um, the uh, driver's steering wheel was pushed back about two feet. Wow. If, that, if there had been an engine block in the front uh, in an ice car, who knows what could have happened. So, I mean, right. the good news here was that no one was hurt. Right. Um, is that the way it was reported in the news? No. Everything I saw said, autopilot causes crash. Right. No. Autopilot did not cause a crash. Autopilot actually probably kept the crash from being more severe than it would have been. Right. Because if the automatic emergency braking hadn't taken place, maybe he would have gone faster into that fire truck and been injured or killed. Yep. But that doesn't sell papers. You no. Know, I mean, you know what papers are, right? Uh, yeah, they're I'm talking newspapers. So, well, so like when people share things online, and then it's like, you need a subscription to read this article. I'm like, what? I wasn't gonna read it anyway. <laughs> that's why they go sensational. Yeah, because it gets gets your eyeballs. That's true. As you can see, this probably isn't what actually happened. Now, the NTSB is probably going to be sending out an investigator, Chris O'Neill, who's a spokesman for the NTSB, said that they might be investigating this because. Tesla and Autopilot are involved. So what is NTSB and... National Traffic Safety Board. Okay. Are they just constantly reviewing accidents? I mean, there's tons and tons of accidents that happen yeah. in the world every day. I thought so too. I thought, oh, well, this is just regular. Of course mm -hmm. they'll go out. No, it turns out there's only a handful of accidents that they cover every year. Why this one in particular? I mean, it seems like... Could it be because the all the coverage? I mean, I guess. It just... Also, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced that they're going to be sending a team of investigators to California to reevaluate the accident. I just, I guess it's just so strange because, I mean, the truck was in the middle of a lane. 
Right. Well, let's look at what it says if you read the owner's manual for a Tesla and yeah. you're going to use traffic aware cruise control, which is what this driver was using. Yeah. Um, it says traffic aware cruise control cannot detect all objects and may not brake or deaccelerate for stationary vehicles, especially in situations where you're driving over 50 miles an hour and a vehicle you were following moves out of your path and a stationary vehicle or object is in front of you instead. So basically exactly what happened. So this, right. this is not something that autopilot is uh, equipped to handle, at, the, at least of yet. That's not the only story, unfortunately. We hear it all the time. Here's mm -hmm. another one from CNBC. Right. So CNBC came out with the story uh, using unnamed sources. They claim that these were employees of Tesla mm -hmm. who were saying that there's still major bottlenecks at the factory coming out with uh, Model 3s and that the batteries uh, are being put together by hand in many cases and that they're not being put together correctly and they could overheat and they could cause fires. All of this stuff based on unnamed sources. If you've got a great source, name your source. I mean, it's not uncommon for any news organization to bring scrutiny to a car, an auto manufacturer, especially when it, you know brake pedals were defective or you know there's some reason, like there's some cause that that we're all seeing. But I think when you know you're naming unnamed sources, when you're cherry picking accidents, really, what what is your actual agenda? Because right. it's clearly not bringing me reputable news is it because tesla is a hot topic and and so whenever people say tesla people perk up and say what, what's what tell me about tesla right it could i mean because cnbc is was actually their next tweet talks about the fact that their first news story about tesla mm -hmm. bashing tesla got the tesla stock to drop it's like it's becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy right. here you're making news yourself to make news about right to make more news I and mean, cnbc just... is all about stocks and stock prices so right. of course they want to get you excited about oh a tesla stock drop you know so that now you're going to tune in so right. that's not responsible reporting that's not what we have the press for to make up stories especially since the initial story was about batteries overheating which has not happened right and as tesla shows here in this letter they wrote that all of this was fabricated none of this is true right um and it's like, where are you getting your story from? Why don't you call Tesla and get, get them to actually report to you what's going on? And here's the opposite of that. Here's a story where we would like to get the story, mm -hmm. and you have to go hunting and hunting to find this. Yes. Only crazy people like Jesse and I find these stories, mm -hmm. mainly because you guys help us find them, yep. and because places like Electric are so good at finding them. This one is about a Tesla employee who's blocked from joining Virginia's motor vehicle dealership board after senators in that state uh, sided with the dealers. Okay, so let's go through this story from the beginning. So okay. what happened here? So the governor of Virginia mm -hmm. appointed a Tesla employee to be on the board of vehicle dealerships. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, 19 members on this board. They're supposed to represent motor vehicle dealers in the state. Mm -hmm. Right before he left office, he appointed them. Great, everything's fine. Nope, wait a minute, hold on a second. Senators in that state said, we don't like this guy, get him out of here. Well, this, that would this, be fine okay. if he had a problem, if he wasn't a good upstanding citizen. The reason is, look at this list here. These are senators, and these amounts of money are the amounts of money given to those senators by... The Dealers Association? The Dealers Association. So, okay, but wait a minute. I mean, senators must do this thing all the time. I mean, about, you know, stuff. Just things that they don't think are right, right? I mean... I mean, you're a senator, you get to... You, right, I mean, you should do that for good reason, but mm -hmm. what there weren't any reasons given. Uh, the only reason seems to be that they don't want a Tesla employee someone representing Tesla on the dealer's board. Well, that's pretty scuzzy. It is scuzzy. And again, this goes back to the news reporting. This isn't something, why wasn't this on CNBC? Right. It's a Tesla story. Right. But you know why? Because it's not going to move the stock. Right. It, and that doesn't, so they don't want to do it. And because it's not that sexy a story, it's not going to get a lot of eyeballs like a crash Tesla. But I mean, you'd, you'd think that, that corruption would be a story, a news story, don't you think? Yeah, you would think. Uh, sad. Yeah. It's a sad day. And I mean, I guess that is why things like YouTube are becoming so popular because it's a way for the news to get out to people as long as someone out there is doing the digging. All right. Well, I want to give a big shout out to the folks at Electric who do the digging every week. They do uh, the digging we every week. report on a lot of the stories that they cover. So if you want to know more about electric vehicles, solar, sustainability, Tesla, go to Electric because they have great reporting. Yep. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching this episode of In Depth. We really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to help support, uh, hopefully, what you consider to be reputable news sources, um, 
you can head over to our Patreon. Um, you can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Um, we have some pretty cool perks right now. Uh, more to come, I think. Yeah, we're working um, on some cool ones. And we hope to see you for Tesla Time News coming out tomorrow. All right, thank you so much for watching. Now you now know. You know.